I think patient advocates can work together to be a common voice for rare disorders and to tell us what their priorities are for treatment. For some disorders, it may be that the endpoints are as simple as survival, as life expectancy and prolonging the life for those individuals. For others, it may be quality of life, but how do we define that? For others, it may be uh, seizures, uh, how frequently seizures are occurring. And I think it's really up to the families to tell us what the priorities are. Many of these disorders are complex, they're multi-system, and we're really interested to hear from the families about what really matters, because that's what's going to inform treatment and the endpoints for clinical trials. Rare disease advocates of today, these next generation advocates, are really taking matters into their own hands, not waiting for pharma or a researcher to develop a therapy for their, for their disorder, but really um, developing research roadmaps, you know, kickstarting research, funding research, sometimes even starting research themselves, either, you know, um, uh, starting a biotech company or a CRO. And so it's really transforming the landscape because these advocates are taking matters into their own hands uh, to de-risk uh, research so that the uh, therapeutic candidates can actually be provided over to pharma when you know when they're you know ready and, and pharma is ready to accept them or they're taking them forward even farther. It's really important that advocates are aware of the drug development process so they can advocate for themselves and be a part of influencing the development of drugs as it continues, whether we start at very basic science all the way up through post-marketing approval. When you are involved in those decision-making um, and can be in those spaces, the drugs that are developed are more targeted for the patient's needs and don't require as many iterations going through. And then at the end, when you're looking at post-marketing, um, both throughout the regulatory process and through clinical trials, it's all about balancing risk and benefit. And it's really important that patients are able to um, give that information back about what they are willing to accept so the best therapies can be created for them. Rare drug development is really important for patient advocates because so many of these diseases are really rare. And I think history has really shown us that the way that we get research done most efficiently um, and, and with the greatest number of collaborators is really with families leading that effort. We really need um, families who are most impacted by these diseases to become involved in the drug development process, and um, that really happens at, at every level. Uh, historically, we would think about families becoming involved as fundraisers, uh, as really as, as funders in research. But really what we've learned is that rare disease advocates um, can get involved in every single step of the drug development pathway and really meaningfully um, accelerate the timeline to therapy. As a rare disease parent, I absolutely agree that it's frustrating to realize that in addition to caring for your child and trying to um, you know, do all of the things that you need to get done in life, that you also have to you know, take up additional work. But you know, I think that for parents who decide to do it, um, and who have the capacity uh, to do it, it you know, is, can really be transformative for you know, the therapeutic um, roadmap for their disease.